let's just look at this second Corinthians 10 it says when I'm surrounded with troubles on every side and face persecution because of my love for Christ I am made yet stronger now that sounds like a contradiction doesn't it how could you be made stronger when you're facing persecution if you're an athlete you understand the idea of no pain <laughs> no gain so like the coach is pushing you to keep going and you don't think you have anything left in you and yet you get stronger by pushing through that difficult thing that you were facing right and we sing that song when it looks like I'm surrounded I'm surrounded by you oh you have to so remember that because the enemy wants to get you to think just give up and quit so that's what Paul's saying when I'm surrounded with troubles on every side of face persecution because of my love for Christ I'm gonna say parenthetically I have a choice I can either be made stronger or I can open myself up to what the enemy wants to do and quit but I'm gonna to choose to be made stronger for my weakness becomes a portal for God's power I can sit back and say you know what Lord I'm nothing in my own strength but you can come in now and take over from me so that's really encouraging to me I kind of analogize it to my cell phone anybody else ever forget to charge your phone I'm sure everybody in here has and you watch that that number going down and down and down and you ever have it where the number goes down faster than usual because like you must have a bunch of apps open that are draining a lot of your battery and then you go online and you find out how to save your battery and like I'm no expert on all this stuff but that's how the Lord showed it to me is we all go through seasons where the battery charges low and he is the one that recharges us if we choose to turn to him right you remember that little four spiritual laws booklet that was uh, that's just billions of them have been given out by Campus Crusade for Christ and Bill Bright and they drew that picture and they say there's two choices you can have yourself on the throne or you can have Jesus on the throne of your heart and that's kind of what this comparison's like if you are in that moment where it feels overwhelming to you and you're vulnerable because you don't know what to do that's a form of weakness but when you turn to God you're putting Jesus on the throne and all of a sudden that dying battery gets recharged because you need power and when I'm sitting on the throne that power drains off way too fast because I'm taking matters into my own hands and God loves us enough to let you do that because he wants to show you no you don't have to do that but when you do things don't end well I want you to depend on me and man even in the times that I don't know what to do when I'm feeling weak I can be a portal to let him come in and charge my battery as opposed to him sitting off on the sideline and watching me drain my battery because I tried to take charge and then you end up having to recover from so many mistakes that you make when you do that all right so um, in, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 it says we now have this light shining in our hearts but we ourselves are like what now, does that sound like a compliment or an insult <laughs> probably most people would say I'm not fragile but it's not the point he's trying to make he wants us to know that compared to the glory that God has in us we are fragile because depending on who's on the throne of your heart you can either hold that glory or the glory leaves because you're in, you're on the throne of your heart and God has to say okay I'll watch while your cistern just drains I didn't want that to happen I wanted you to be connected to the springs but if you're gonna to try to take charge and do it yourself then I'm just gonna to have to sit back and watch so it's not an insult at all it's there to remind us you know fragile if you said a vase was fragile that wouldn't be an insult it means it's delicate it means it's a fine piece of China let's say it's not a negative it just says be careful handle it with care and we're, we're jars of clay but what's inside of us it's so great containing this great treasure there's a light shining in our hearts and we're like a fragile clay jar that contains this great treasure and here's the point again Paul writing it makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves so what's the great temptation that Satan tries to put on us is pride right and and sometimes the more Christian you become and the more you read the more pride creeps in and it's back to us sitting on the throne again and not staying humble and not allowing those things that 
I don't always know what to do. We, we have to know what to do because knowing what to do is what a strong Christian means. Well, no, you're supposed to stay pliable in his hands. And when you come across a situation where you don't feel you have the goods, you just stop and say, Lord, I need your help right now. 24-7. This could be in any situation in your life. You just pause and say, I need help. I, I'm, I'm stuck on this one. I need you to come in here and recharge my battery right now. Lord, I'm getting off the throne. Or you could think of a pilot and a co-pilot. I'm just handing the controls over to you. That's not a sign of weakness. You're not bothering God. Or you're not less than because you didn't know what to do. He's trying to show you on a daily basis. Situations are not structured the same way. Each situation is different, and you need the fresh anointing of the Lord to show you what to do. That power inside us is not from us. It's from the Lord. Amen? So... Think about some of the people who had the power of God in the Old and the New Testament. Think of King David, amazing man of God, held up to us as an example, as a man after God's own heart. The great king, Jesus the Messiah, was going to have to come through the line of David. So what much, how much higher of a compliment could you get? And yet he had a besetting sin in his life. He couldn't control his sexual appetite. And appetites take a lot of different forms, but that's been one of the devil's main ones that he's used on people for all these centuries, right? Is not being able to control a sexual appetite. Now, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is called temperance. Love, joy, peace, they're all great. But you know what? Temperance is a really good one. Because in the Old Testament it says, if you don't rule your spirit, you're like a city with the wall broken down. That means the enemy can just come in and attack you. So all these ways David is controlling and, and ruling his spirit. He's writing psalms. He's engaging with the Lord. He gets a promise from God that your son is going to be the, the king. And God wasn't talking about Solomon. He was talking about Jesus. What a promise. And yet he tapped into the cistern instead of the spring. There was a root issue in his life that he never dealt with, and I don't want him to correct me when I get to heaven, so I'm not going to go too far off. But when he fell into sin with Bathsheba, it wasn't just his life that took a, a downturn. The whole nation took a downturn, right? Because Solomon, he, he way outdid his father with all those porcupines and concubines and, and wives and all of these relationships he made with these foreign nations. He opened the whole country up to idolatry. And yet he was the smartest man in the world. And yet he was still victim spiritually to being subject to the cistern instead of the springs. He, in, his, in his logic and his wisdom, he counted too much, Solomon did, in his wisdom. Even though the anointing was there, when they dedicated the temple, the, the anointing was so strong that priests couldn't even stand to minister. So it's not binary. It's not like you're either all in or you're all out. We're all working in areas where we're very mature in some areas, but then there's other areas that we have a weakness and a vulnerability. And God's saying, in that weakness and vulnerability, that's my opportunity to come into your life. You could be a portal of my power. You don't have to give in to that cistern. Stay tapped into my springs. But you need to be humble to do that because that means you have to admit you don't have it all together. And if the religious system you're in is telling you you have to keep it all together and you can't admit that you're dealing with a problem, you're stuck. You're in a bad spot. Well, I've said it enough times here, but I'm going to say it again. We want an honest culture where we can be healthy with each other. The Holy Spirit's called the spirit of truth. If we can't speak truth to each other about the stuff that we're dealing with and the problems that we have, where are you going to speak about this? It's got to be in church. You've got to feel safe in church to be able to talk to somebody and say, I need help. And, you know, we're going to say, well, have you read the word? And if you say no, well, you're gonna, then we're going to have to say, well, why not? If you need help, there's your place to go. Start there. Doesn't mean we won't help you. But this isn't a hospital where we're just going to start injecting you. You're going to have to do some of the work yourself. We can't do it for you. We can help you on the way. But, you know, from all the years of experience, you, you could be enabling somebody to stay in the cistern. We all have to take ownership of our own walk with God. Amen. 